Nothing is ever unanimous among witches. Aunt Iris, of course, wanted to go so she could be with Nell and Bracken, and Scabiosa, Red, Rose, Sedge, and Reed were all going. But Violet, Gentian, and Pensamon wanted to stay, come what may. This is our home, said Gentian. Pensamon, pleaded Rose. Gentian, Violet, there's no future for you in this valley. Even if no more humans come, ever, what will life will you have here? There will be no more witchlings without wood folk. The last of you will grow old and die and turn to dust, and that will be the end of it. Better dust then than dust now, said Violet. I would rather die than be the last witch in this world, said Reed. There may be other covens in the new world. And the fading, think of the fading when the humans come. Surely you don't want to just linger on here, waiting for the end. I don't care, said Pensamon, looking at the ground. I'm old and tired and afraid. I want to stay in this valley, even if the humans do come. Bracken looked at Nettle. Go on, said Nettle. Tell them. So Bracken told them about Ben and his idea. In the shocked silence that followed, Violet had to go sit down on a boulder and fan herself with her hat. A human? She kept saying in a faint, outraged voice. Us? Listen to a human? He's a witch friend, said Nettle. Didn't I say he's a witch friend? That doesn't mean he knows what's best for us, said Violet. Why, humans hardly live longer than, I don't know, than insects. What do they know about? Reed interrupted her. I think it's a good idea. So do I, said Sedge. I think we should try again on the veil, said Violet. We have tried, snapped Rose, countless times, as you well know. More talk, endless talk. Then at last, the stay in the valley ones, except for Violet, agreed that the idea, however strange, was worth a try. Aunt Iris still wasn't sure, but the stay in the valley ones insisted that if you were leaving, you didn't get a say, since after all, you would be gone soon. And thus, after that, discussion was finally over. It was decided. Now everyone fly to the village, please, said Bracken. Stay in your cottages until it's safe to come out, and don't argue, she added quickly. They actually listened to us, most of them, said Nettle, watching the ragged V of witches fly away. Amazing. Nettle and Bracken waited until every witch in the coven was sure to be in her cottage, then flew back to the pass. Did they agree to it? asked Ben. Close enough, said Nettle, suddenly nervous. All right, then, said Ben. Now listen carefully. I'm going to go over the instructions one more time. You understand everything I've said? He asked when he was done. Yes, they both nodded solemnly. Do not use your finger sparks at any time for any reason. Got that? I'm staying here, said the raccoon, wringing his hands. Got it, said Ben again. We do understand, said Bracken, really. So with Ben swinging between them, Nettle and Bracken flew high up above the pass and looked for a pattern of deep cracks. They needed a kind of network in the rocks. It didn't take all that long to find them. They hovered near the first crack. Ben clambered out on the rock. He waved them off. Stay back, he said, still waving, farther. He took a stick of dynamite from his rock stack, and then, very carefully, he attached something called a blasting cap. It was small and silver, and in turn was attached to a long string like a candle wick. A fuse, it was called. When he was done, he stood up, scrambled a little way from the fuse, and waved them back. After that, they flew him next to the crack. One by one, he set all the sticks into the cliffs above the pass. Each stick's fuse snaked across the rocks to a spot where it connected with all the other fuses, so they could all be lit at once. The place where all the fuses connected was behind a big boulder, far away from the sticks of dynamite. When all the fuses were connected, they were ready for Ben, and only Ben, to light while taking shelter behind the boulder. Nettle and Black Bracken flew high, scanning the slopes for anything that moved. Nettle warned off two hawks and several ravens, who warned the marmots. Soon the news had spread to all the other animals. There was a scurrying and squeaking, then silence. All's clear, said Bracken, when they had flown back to the boulder. Good, said Ben. Now fly down toward the village. I'll wait until I'm sure you are far enough away, and then some. You'll be safe, though, won't you? said Bracken suddenly. I've done this in the army, said Ben. I'll be fine. Now get going, and when you're far enough away, I'll signal, just before I light it. The raccoon climbed on behind Bracken. The three of them flew away until Ben was only a small figure, watching them. They saw him wave wild, widely, which was a signal to put their fingers in their ears. Then he touched the fuses and crouched behind the boulder. A pause of one beat, two beats, three beats, and then BOOM! The mountainside began to slide. Boulders came thundering down, like a thousand games of catapult all played at once. A great cloud of dust rose. And when at last silence fell, there was no more pass into the valley. Ben stood back up and waved.